Hello there, Di here. I've been watching on YouTube Carla on at Caged Fish um, making a lovely gold or making concertina books and the last one she made was all using different pieces of gold, lots of gold paper like tissue paper and wrapping paper, gold coloured uh, book pages which caught my fancy straight away and I decided to have a go. And you can see I coated a piece of black paper with some gold acrylic paint. Then I got out the ink of gold and the Gilders pastes, the Kaiser mists, antique gold, the Mr. Huey's gold, and the Lindy's uh, Tibetan poppy teal that I used a little bit of. And I got busy on some book pages. And that one at the very top, it says Arty Farty, which I thought was rather rather cute. It was just the page I pulled from the dictionary, very appropriately. And I'm just applying that to these pages using a dried um, baby wipe because I just wanted something to smear these bits of gilding over the paper and not occlude all of the text but to have it in various degrees of opacity. So some of it's a bit translucent, some of it's more opaque, um, but all of it, as you can see there, is gorgeously gilded and shiny and delicious. So that one was made using the ink gold. Um, that was just a plain gold. Then I got out the Gilders paste, the antique gold, this one, and you'll see there's a slight um, a slightly darker, more sort of bronzy sort of colour. I use that same baby wipe to apply that. This is a little, a little harder to apply. It's a little thicker, not as easily spread, but it went on quite nicely and I was very pleased with the outcome. I wasn't quite sure at this stage what I was going to do, but I just wanted to use some of Carla's techniques to have a play and see what I could come up with. Give that a little buff with a, a bamboo cloth. And you can see the delicious shininess of that. And you can still see the text through the through the surface. And there's the difference in the colour between the gold and the antique gold. The next one I do is using the Gilders Paste too, but um, Patina. This one is called, it's a delicious greeny blue. I love the colour. I thought, well, while it's not gold, it's definitely got some sheen to it. And I can add some gold to the surface as well, which you'll see in a moment. I haven't used that for quite a while, it's starting to dry a little. I need to use some of it up. Spreading it out fairly thinly and putting it on in quite a few layers which uh, sort of built up the colour quite nicely as you can see there. It's a very pretty colour. And was just a shiny in the, in the end as the, as the more golden ones. I've got a little bit of the Heidi Swap colour shine in gold. Um, that's basically it's run out and it's all clogged up and it's nasty, but I put a little bit of water into the residue. You can see there how lovely and shiny that page is. And the additional water in the Heidi Swap allowed me to get the last of the, the lovely gold pigment out of that uh, spray bottle. And I use it for things like this where I want larger blobs, where I don't want a fine mist. I was just getting the last of it out. I've put the lid back on here and I'm spraying it. And you can see it. Some of it's blobbing and some of it's a finer spray. But that was sort of the effect I wanted. I didn't want to make it gold all over. I'll just put that aside to dry. And these ones, I haven't done them on, on the video, I did them before so they'd be dry, but you can see that one had a little bit of the Mr. Huey and some of the teal spray over the top, so it's 
very fine gold underneath the green. This one had both the Mr. Hueys and the Kaiser Mist, so both the gold and the antique gold, and that made a nice effect. And this one was the same, except it had quite a bit of the overspray from the teal, and I thought that was very pretty, so put that aside. Now I got out the embossing powder and the Versamark ink and a few stamps that I wanted to try. The uh, embossing buddy and black embossing powder. Now I rarely use black embossing powder these days. I nearly always stamp with a black ink and then clear emboss over the top if I'm doing it on white because I don't like the effect of the graininess of the embossing powder. But I found surprisingly with doing it over the gilding it um, didn't leave any extra speckles or residue at all even though I didn't really mind if it did so that's life for you isn't it I was still trying to work out here quite what I was going to do with this card and I'm just going through an embossing on the the gilded pages as Carla did in her in her tutorial and was very pleased with how it looked and I went on and did a few other bits of embossing but I've cut those out because I didn't end up using them in this project. As I say, at this stage I'm still playing. I was pleased at the way they embossed. You can see some of the others there. And I have this tree which is a memory box stamp called Tree of Blooms which I haven't used all that much but it's an attractive little tree. And I thought as I went to stamp it I wouldn't use the gold, I'd use that um, patina and gold splatters page and see how it went. I wasn't sure how it would go over the loose gold but I was surprisingly pleased at how well it worked and gave it a really good hard push down to make sure that I got as much as the verse mark onto the page as I could. And When I lifted the stamp off, and you'll see in a moment, a lot of the gold came off the page and attached itself to the stamp so I thought, hmm, this isn't going to emboss very well, but surprisingly it did. It embossed very well. And the stamping was quite complete, which uh, rather surprised me. But then I'm easily surprised, I guess. But I really liked the, the look of it. I liked the effect of the black embossing on that greeny pattern with the gold. You can see there the amount of gold that actually stuck to the stamp. It cleaned off very easily with my cleaning mat. Just getting the heat tool out to heat emboss that and seal it. Getting the heat tool nice and hot before you start, uh, make sure that you don't warp the page too much with the heat, though I find the book pages don't warp nearly as much as some of the card stocks. There it is, you can see how nice and shiny that is. I was very pleased with the look. So I decided that was going to be the one I used for the card. So I got out the black and gold piece that I'd prepared earlier. But I really didn't like it. I decided eventually that I wouldn't use that piece. But here I'm just tearing off the residue from the, the prepared panel around the text field, not too far away from the stamped image so that it just becomes a, a focal piece. and making the edges a bit raggedy. When I put it on that panel that I prepared, I really didn't like the effect. It looked too fussy and the background detracted from the, from the tree panel. So I thought about it for a bit and I decided to change it to a plain black which I liked better, but um, I then added a gold a map behind the 
behind the tree image and I like that a lot more. I probably could have cut the size down a bit. It seems a little large now, but this is the way it is. Over the top with gold. Now I wanted to make a little congratulations to go across the card and the card was large enough for me to be able to put that um, that little word die right across so I cut out one from black a nice heavyweight black cardstock scrap from a bin and use that as the base I like to do at least two to give it some um, stability though this was a long and not particularly easy word to join together that first layer stayed together nicely but the second layer as you can see in a moment stretched itself and became quite difficult, quite recalcitrant in fact. I put a little bit of just some craft glue onto the second piece, spread it out with my finger and applied some gold leaf to the sticky side. I wasn't careful about this, just plonking it down, it's double in paces, um, just to use up that little bowl of gold leaf that was sitting on my bench since before Christmas. I really like the effect of adding the leaf to a panel and then die cutting it or die cutting a word. It gives it a very shabby distressed look that I really like and even though this is such a fine word I think I really like the effect of it. I should have in reality left it a little longer than I did before I cut this word out overnight would have been perfect but as it was I did it um, fairly soon after I made that panel and it was still as you can see there a little tricky a little adhesive still but it worked out in the end when I took it out of the die it stretched quite badly as you can see there but with a little bit of judicious patting and tweaking and encouragement it went back into its shape. That's one of the good things about having a second piece to ad adhere it to. It um, gives you a guide for the correct shape of the piece. I cut out quite a bit of this because it was a bit fiddly. I just went over it with my zig glue pen which I find is great for these fine um, words putting them together and there you can see I've I saved you the distress of watching me uh, wangle it together. I then laid it on a piece of plain white paper and rubbed it firmly to get the adherence between the layers and then found it was just a trifle sticky on the back and so it wanted to stay put but I wanted to lift it so I just used my spatula and slid under it. Now I leave it to dry. Now I'm just going to go through the process of putting the card together. I've made a card base with a nice heavy Nina Solar White and the card measures five and a half by seven and a half in total. So all of these other mats are cut down proportionally. And I adhered them all with double sided tape because I find uh, some of these, particularly the black cardstock, the gold is fine but the black cardstock isn't a very good weight that I'm using, just using up some pieces that I had and it's quite soft and I find if I use a wet adhesive on it it can warp so I try and keep um, just use the tapes that are drier. A little bit of glue stick on the back of that and adhering that down to the gold mat. Being very very careful to avoid any finger contact with foil. I've done this time and time again, used this lovely shiny, it's always mirror board, both in silver and gold, and I touch the touch the surface with a gluey finger or a painty finger or an inky finger and just you lose the effect of that lovely gleaming gold surface. I got it to this stage and then realised that I should have inked around the edge but in reality it was better that I had the front panel on because it gave me somewhere to um, 
hold the panel while I inked it from the back with a um, pit pen with a brush tip. I find these are wonderful for doing the edges. They're lovely and fine, lovely long brush. And they're nice and juicy, so they, there it is, pit out its pen. So just blackening that white cut edge without too much trauma to the gold. Making sure that that piece of paper hasn't got anything on it. I'm determined to keep this one neat and clean. Now adding some tape to the back of the gold panel. Putting plenty on so it's nice and secure. Burnishing it down so it stays put, gets maximum coverage. It also, if you burnish it down, it makes it far easier to remove the backing paper from each strip comes off much easier. It doesn't curl up at the ends. A little bit of glue stick. Now I'm putting the double sided tape onto the back of the black mat. That's the side that will go onto the card, card base itself. Burnish those down. and check that the surface is spotless or a few little gold flecks hanging about not that you would have noticed them with all the other gold and adhering the gold mat down onto that so that's the whole panel ready to add to the card I'm just giving it a final burnish under the gentle burnish under that piece of paper to make sure that all of the tape is well adhered. A little bit of a mark there but a dry tissue and a very gentle rub just removes that. Off with the tape backing. Glue stick. And you can see the card base there ready waiting. sure I've got the front where the front needs to be. Sorry about the head. I've, I keep forgetting. I've really got to look at the camera position and or zoom in a little more so it avoids my head. As I say, this was just a play session. I didn't intend to really video so I wasn't even thinking about these things. Congratulations. Word is now nice and dry and well adhered, so I'm using the larger of my zig pen, uh, pens to put plenty of adhesive on the back of that to adhere it down onto the card front right across the, the image. That large one always seems to leak. I have to be so careful that it gets onto the wrong side of the of the die if you're not careful. Just tapping it down with the end of my bone folder and adding a little acrylic block. And then I found in my flower press, I've been playing with some pressed flowers and looking at making some cards, and I had this four-leaf clover and I thought, well, a new job, a new position, which is what this card is for, for a friend. Um, doesn't really require much luck. It's, you know, the harder you work, the luckier you get sort of thing. But I thought we all need a bit of luck. And I had this four leaf clover sitting on the table. And rather than find somewhere to store it, I thought I'd just add it to the back of the card. I like to put something on the back of my cards and 
this one got the lucky four leaf clover. I do hope it brings a good luck. And just put that on with some matte medium and left it to dry. And there it is. I bought recently very, very, very cheaply some some calendars and this one was the pop art one that's got some lovely Andy Warhol and other images in it and one of them was this um, sort of grocery image that I made into an envelope and as this person works for a major Australian um, grocery organisation I thought this was the perfect page to use for her card. as it got a can of fruit on the front. That's it. There's a couple of these still photos. Thanks so much for watching and I'll talk to you soon. Bye for now.